San Diego's world-renowned biotechnology industry was spawned by UC San Diego, and it continues to grow, supplied by new ideas and fresh talent from the university's Division of Biological Sciences. Dean Steve Kay talks about the future of biology and what it means for San Diego and the rest of the world. San Diego has been very fortunate during times when certain sectors of the economy were on a downswing to have an, an explosion in life sciences research in the biopharma community that we see. Many people probably don't realize that here on Torrey Pines Mesa, within a four mile radius of our division at UCSD, 29,000 people participate in biomedical research every day. We essentially have a booming economy in biopharma and our division and UC San Diego as a whole trains the workforce. We provide many discoveries that are used by that industry. Well over 200 companies have been founded on the Mesa that are a product of UC San Diego and its neighboring research institutions. This is a scientific economy that employs tens and tens of thousands of people here in San Diego and has essentially buffered San Diego from some of the economic hard times that other areas of the country which didn't have a life science industry were subject to. I've often been quoted as saying that biology will save the world. And what I re really mean by that is, is biologists will save the world and a knowledge of biology will help save the world. Why? Because to me, biology is the study of all living things on the planet. And so understanding biology helps us understand who we are, how we can be more healthy, how we can interact with other living things in our environment, and it enables us to essentially be better global citizens. Members of our San Diego community should really understand who we are in the Division of Biological Sciences. What is our work here? How will it impact their daily lives? A lot of people probably look at this tower that we live in and, and think many of us are sort of leather-patched academics wearing our Birkenstocks and, and really isolated from society. That really couldn't be further from the truth. We are a vibrant center of science, an agent of change, because many scientists um, here in the division are very interested, for example, in understanding the LANSI interface. We'll be establishing a center here that will help us use science to direct policies that will better manage our local environment, for example. On the health side, we have researchers who, for example, are looking at new ways in which cells interact with the flu virus and how we might combat viral diseases such as the flu or hepatitis C. These health problems and environmental problems are very real for the residents of San Diego County and our scientists here in the division are actively engaged in solving those problems. The reason that I say our division here of biological sciences at UCSD can be an agent of change for our society is because I believe that through research and education will impact three key areas. One is global health, making us more healthy on a global scale. Second is our environment, better stewardship for a cleaner environment. And the third are contributions from biologists that will help us build a stronger economy. In the case of health, we at the division, for example, have a great knowledge of our immune system, of how our bodies combat disease. What we want to do is harness that knowledge so that we can begin to apply it, for example, to some of the more ig ignored diseases that we see emerging in developing countries. We have plenty of scientists here who really understand how the brain works, looking at that brain-mind interface. And what is it that goes wrong when we see an elderly relative suffering from Alzheimer's? Biologists in our division are really coming up with new ideas about what is the disease process in Alzheimer's and how they might tackle that. In terms of the environment, we have biologists who care a great deal about ecosystems, about how we can measure what is in an ecosystem. And instead of managing our ecosystems from a species point of view, we can start to look at the whole ecosystem and come up with much better decisions about managing and stewarding our environment. 
In the case of the economy, I think what's very important is we're facing the fact that petroleum will one day run out. And even before it runs out, we face a risk to society, both from security and its expense. So many of our microbial and plant scientists are looking at new ways of making fuels that will provide a more secure and stronger economy. It's very interesting that, that ethanol would be so much in the press right now. It's either on a vote about whether we should ban it on our beaches, or what we're hearing is this strange phenomenon that ethanol is essentially being grown in the Midwest or somehow being produced from vast tracts of sugarcane in Brazil. So what is biofuel and why does it matter? And are we really going to be converting corn on the cob into something that we can pour into our car engines? Well, we really are facing a, a crisis, an impending crisis in our fuel security. And what scientists need to do is to look at two major issues. The scientific one that we know we will run out of petroleum reserves. And the second is the expense and, and national security that's involved in acquiring petroleum resources. So what we can do is we can start to look inside of plants and inside of microbes, which are in fact biological factories for making chemicals of, of a huge variety. And what we need to do is unlock those factories and encourage those biological processes to produce new types of fuel molecules that will replace those that we pull out of the earth. What this will result in is lower carbon emissions, so a, a reduction and a, and a management plan for greenhouse gases and global warming. But it will also supply a whole new economy, a whole new type of fuel that ultimately will replace petroleum and give us more security and a cleaner environment. There's a great deal of activity right now in the biofuels arena. We see investment from the biotechnology sector. People who normally have invested in pharmaceutical companies are now investing in small startup companies that have new technologies to create biofuels. We see large oil companies facing the facts that they're going to no longer have petroleum reserves, and we see governments facing the facts that they have to play an active role in environmental stewardship and really take big measures towards ameliorating global warming. Here in the Division of Biological Sciences at UC San Diego, we're very lucky to have excellent scientists who study plants and microbes and who know how to capture the internal factories of those plant and microbe cells and direct them towards making new fuel molecules. We have colleagues at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography who study algae, single-celled plants, that can be harnessed potentially to turn sunlight into fuel products that you can actually put into the tank of your car. And just across the way in the campus, we have colleagues at the Jacobs School of Engineering who understand how to capture these biological processes and to scale them up so they can really be done on the large industrial scale that's going to be necessary to produce these new fuel molecules and help save our planet. I feel very strongly that biologists have a serious responsibility to help the public understand how biology impacts their lives. I grew up on a small island in the English Channel, and one of the reasons I became a biologist was my daily interaction with the ocean. And second, it was a little French man that appeared on the TV, and his name was Jacques Cousteau, and he used to tell us to wave goodbye to his friends from the deep. And what that man did was to show the world what had happened in the Mediterranean Sea and actually get enough interest in the biology of that sea to ultimately get political action that caused the Mediterranean to be cleaned up. This is a great example of how unlocking the natural historian that is in all of us can have a very beneficial impact on society. One of the things we're doing this year in the division to help educate the public about biological sciences and its, its relevance to their lives is to run a series of lectures called Evolution Matters in partnership with the San Diego Natural History Museum. These lectures are designed to help the public understand 
the role of evolution, of course, in generating this beautiful array of species that we see on our planet, the biodiversity of this planet, but also to help the public understand that evolution has a role to play in every biological scientist's lives, whether they be a doctor creating cancer cures or someone who's managing environments and has to steward biodiversity. Evolution really has a role to play in a contemporary sense and is relevant to people's lives today. The reason I came to UC San Diego to be leader of the Division of Biological Sciences is because I see this incredibly bright future. And I really want people to understand how bright that future is. It's about harnessing our knowledge, channeling that knowledge to improve healthcare for our local community, healthcare for our aging population. It's about producing plans for our environment where we're going to have clean, safe beaches, clean, safe oceans for our children to swim in. We're going to be much better stewards of our environment because of what's happening here in the division, because of the science and the knowledge that we're generating. And ultimately, in the not too distant future, we won't even have to worry about gas prices anymore because we're going to beat the pump using our knowledge of biological systems. And that's why I feel great when I go to bed every night because I know the next morning on the horizon is the bright future of how biological sciences will really save the world.